Hello world, good morning. This is Joya and I'm back again for the Founders and Innovators Morning Show. And today I have a show that I know many of you entrepreneurs who are interested in funding, which isn't that just about all of us, are gonna be very <laughs> interested to hear. I'm here today with Mark, who is the Business Development Officer for Prestamos. So Mark, tell us all about your organization and what it is that you do. Yeah, definitely. I'd love to thank you for having me on this morning, for one, and I really appreciate the, the time allowed to give us to talk a little bit about our organization. Um, Presum was, was formed back in 1980 um, from one of our larger counterpart, which is Chicanos por la Causa. Uh, that organization was formed 50 years ago, and in early 1980, we saw a need to help small businesses find capital to either start uh, startup businesses or existing businesses to help them grow. Uh, typically what we found is there was this gap that we needed to fill because we saw the need out there were people that couldn't get normal financing through the retail channel, which is through banking means. So we kind of, found you know our opportunity there and that's how we formed Presamos you know back in 1980. Um, you know we are also what we call a, a community development financial institution. With that designation um, in accordance with federal law and the U.S. Department of Treasury policy we're able to use that designation to also find opportunity for government funding. Um, and, and also being committed to the Community Reinvestment Act uh, regulations, you know, that fall within those guidelines also. And that kind of follows suit to what our overall mission is in, in helping our communities and empowering those that we serve. I love that. So I know a lot of people in this community, this is a community for entrepreneurs. So people are gonna be interested to hear how is it that funding could potentially work for them? Maybe you could share a story or two about some examples of entrepreneurs, startups that you've worked with in the past and the kind of difference that you've been able to make for their ventures. Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, we have plenty of stories, plenty of stories out there. And, um, you know, I, and I'll talk about some, some clients of mine that most recently that we've been able to help, but, you know, Phoenix and, and, and Tucson, the Southern Arizona region, huge, huge entrepreneurial uh, community. Um, and, and even lately within the past five years, we've seen you know, a, a big amount of growth you know, in that community. A lot of it has come from, um, if we look at some of the, the Silicon Valley tech startup you know, uh, opportunities and people that have kind of migrated out to our region, um, a lot of that is is just the high cost of living that's associated out in that region, and now they're here in, in our region. Um, so we've seen a lot of startup uh, community there, and again, finding that opportunity, that opportunity for us, and being able to help businesses in that respect, knowing how crucial it is to the local economies and how crucial it is to seeing our communities grow and benefit from that. Um, how we play a part is initially, and what we see always with startups for one, in going out and seeking funding, more times than not, they're declined because they don't have the experience yet. A uh, normal retail channel, you're, they're gonna look from anywhere from two to three years of business history to follow up on, to even really um, kind of base a decision, you know, off of past performance for a company. But if you're a new company, you don't have that history. You're just starting out. So we see a lot of it. And where we come into that is we've identified um, some opportunities where a lot of times these small business owners, these entrepreneurs, they have uh, savings, minimal savings, or they also have um, used a lot of their savings to invest already into the development mm -hmm. you know, of their company. 
you know, so how do we place a, a value onto that investment, right? And, and trying to find something tangible and something. So we're able to do that. We're able to look back and we're able to see um, different ways where we can kind of utilize that investment, initial investment as collateral, you know, to being able to extend capital to them. Uh, a lot of times they'll have uh, home ownership. So a lot of our small investors, they own their own homes, which in their homes, they have lots of equity, you know, and, and we're probably looking at a range, an initial startup range of anywhere from 10 to 50,000. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what we call our micro loan space. And in that space, we also benefit from the support through our small business administration, uh, where we're able to get funding through them and have this pool of money that we can use in that realm. So, you know, utilizing existing investments into startups, utilizing existing collateral that in most cases, other retail partners don't normally look at or will take for a startup, but we'll do that. You know, we find the opportunity where we can say, okay, well, here's their buy-in, here's their stake in the game. You know, Mark, I'm willing to, you know, use my home as collateral to help me out, you know, get started with my, with my project. And so being able to do that and being able to perfect a process that mitigates some of the risk that we look at gives us that opportunity to come up with programs where we can lend out against that collateral. Um, and the same, same goes for existing businesses. You know, it, with existing businesses that have been in the game for probably, uh, you know, two to three years, they have that experience, but yet they might have come across some challenges with credit. Mm -hmm. or maybe their business hasn't taken off and they haven't seen that cash flow or that break even point yet, you know, get past that hump. So but what we're able to do is we're able to look at projections. You know, we work with our small business clients and formulate, you know, what we're going to see two to three years out. You know, and if they still have that collateral, they still have that investment into their business over those years, we're able to use that and then say and work with our clients and, and let them know um, that we have opportunities or programs for them right so th that's kind of you know recently and i'll just go to my examples here of a client a young uh, gentleman by the name of kenny king and we just uh, helped him out start a business of his dream and he's a chef mm. so and he's been in the industry for well over 15 years and he's always had a dream to go out and create his own menu and he found a perfect opportunity where he found a business and a location and using his savings and putting it into the business and kind of doing tenant improvements on the building. But he needed 16,000 mm -hmm. to get over that hump, you know? And so we were able to come in, he had equity in a home. And just with that, we were able to get him that money. And this is a startup business. Nobody, in fact, one of our partners from Vantage West Credit Union here locally, and we work a lot with our retail partners, he knew that there was no way they were, able gonna, they were gonna be able to, to move that project forward only because it was a new business. Mm -hmm. But right away, they, they, he called me up. He said, hey, Mark, I have you know, a potential client. So, you know, getting that and looking at kind of uh, uh, looking at the story and um, helping them along through that process, um, we were able to get him through the finish line, you know, and that was 16,000, you know, and um, and again, it's a micro loan product. This is a, a sponsored through the SBA. Interest rates are, are nominal uh, considering the environment, the other side of the environment out there is that a lot we see a lot of small business owners go to are the hard money lending companies that sometimes you know they serve a need but at the same time you know 
what we do is we want to provide something where the client doesn't necessarily have to get into a situation where they're pay, paying exorbitant interest rates. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so we're able to keep, you know, good interest rates and good payment and low payment for him. So um, it was it was a, definitely a success and watching him get the place opened up and it just opened this past October and they're going gang bugs and busters right now, you know, and they're busy and they have a great menu in place right now. But um, I just posted a, a link on my LinkedIn page. and. Um, but it, that you know, being able to help a young entrepreneur like that, you know, it, that's what that's what makes it worth it, right? Um, mm -hmm. We had a business uh, just further south in a town called Green Valley. It was a small business, woman-owned, woman-owned business, um, and she was referred to us through a partner of ours through U.S. Bank, and she's looking. She owns a, a day spa. And there she does various services uh, in her particular facility, but she wanted to start uh, with laser hair removal and skin rejuvenation services. Um, but she, she had a, a, a need there and her loan request was for 100,000. Wow. So we went from this, this gamut to you know, a, another you know, gamut in another uh, area that we're, again, we go the full gamut, you know, based off of the need. Um, but she wasn't able to get a loan because of a bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. And that bankruptcy though was maybe almost two and a half years, three years old. Uh, some banks, they look at it and they you know, automatically will decline it. They won't even look at it. Well, there's a story behind it, though, because she's already been in business for just about six years now, and her business was profitable. She was generating good revenue. Um, so to us, you know, beyond some of the challenges that are faced with small businesses, uh, a big one is credit. Um, if we're able to find a story behind that, we're able to find a story and say, okay, well, what, you know, where did, you know, what were the circumstances then and what are the circumstances now? And we have to really give people an opportunity, you know, and, and we're that kind of second chance where we can say, hey, you know what, this, this makes sense, you know, and um, so with her, we're able to get her funded. We're able to get her through the finish line. And now she has a hundred thousand dollar piece of equipment that's going to generate a whole different, you know, source of revenue for that business and help her business grow and move forward. And um, so there's just tons of stories out there. Um, more recently, too, another one, and we'll even go further beyond that. But a, a six hundred a six hundred thousand dollar loan we did wow. for a ch charter school in uh, the Phoenix Marydale area. And uh, again, you know, looking at what they were doing there at their facility and the growth that existed and charter schools are, you know, it's a nonprofit industry. And this is another, this is another uh, flag or another challenge that these type of businesses deal with when they're going out seeking funding. Uh, banks, you know, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, they, they won't, you know, because the source of revenue and revenue is, is, is usually stable and you don't see year over year growth with some nonprofit companies because they have one focus, you know, and their focus, you know, typically is, is serving a need in the community, but they're not focused on revenue growth year over year. But for us, it, what it comes down to is whether or not we see the opportunity where they can make payments towards a loan request or toward, towards a capital request. And so, yeah, so there, there's, there's tons of stories out there and, and we're doing it, we're finding the need. Um, and we have, you know, we, we have lots of money to deploy. 
that sounds great. We we need for your viewers and and you know for members you know to you know to seek out you know opportunities and to come to us and look for opportunities and potentials and we even have our own technical assistance team in house that helps new business startups build business plans, um, and ca calculate and, and formulate projections, things that are needed for the underwriting process, which is also crucial. Um, you know, we want to help those small businesses get started and off their feet, but we, more importantly, we want to pre-position them for a positive outcome when they're looking for capital. Um, I, I think I would probably say one of the biggest challenges that we're faced with um, is the lack of preparedness that some of our business, small business owners are faced with. Um, and the lack of preparedness with regards to financials. You know, we get a lot of existing businesses, um, more so is where they're going out and they're coming to seek financials. The first thing uh, or loan requests, the first things I'm going to ask for them are financials, uh, a profit and loss statement, a balance sheet, and uh, income taxes. And, uh, you know, so believe it or not, I would, you know, probably say 80% of the time, small business owners don't have that readily available for me. And these, this is one of the things that, you know, we also focus on and, and, and are creating workshops around where we can educate our small business owners around, you know, having those documents readily available and maintaining them on a month to month basis and how crucial it is to use these to measure, you know, the growth and success of your business, you know, and, and so it's, um, so yeah, so yeah, we, we got lots of other things also as well that we do and we participate in and try to help our, our small business clients, you know, get to that next level. I hear you saying so many important things that I think a lot of people in our audience really do need to hear, even the importance of perhaps thinking about what their story is. I wonder how many people in our audience even don't even think about a loan because they assume that they don't have the kind of story that that could set them up for a loan. And then everything that you're saying about the need to be prepared and to be educated. Unfortunately though, we're almost out of time, but let people know if, if they're interested to learn more about what you're doing, if they wanna get some more of this education, maybe talk with you and, and see if they have a story that could help them get a loan. How can they find out more about your organization? Oh, no, de definitely. You know, we're, we're again in, in the Phoenix metro area in Southern Arizona. Uh, where I'm based right now in Tucson, um, visit us online, you know, take a look at some of the different products that, that we have and, and get to learn a little bit more about us. We are revamping our site right now and come January, we're going to have a, a new, uh, more exciting, you know, site to look at and, and to be able to uh, manipulate through. But, you know, you mentioned the story and, and I think that's what we need to kind of take away is, you know, when we look at our small business owners out there and, and those new startup companies, those entrepreneurs that are out there kind of, you know, wondering where am I going to get capital? How do I look at, you know, everybody has a story and I've come across many stories. And what's pretty cool about our company is that we have the flexibility to look beyond and help create a storyline for you and, and kind of um, look back and, and see where you've come from and where you're at now and, and build something on that, right? And look for those opportunities. So, you know, there are many people out there with, with, again, they've come from different places and everybody wears different shoes, you know, so you can't count yourself out, you know, and, you have to, you know, one of my uh, favorite sayings is, you know, you're better off, uh, uh, oh, let me kind of back up, um, you're far off better to have tried something and failed than to have tried nothing and succeeded. I you think know, that's a lesson that uh, all you, of us you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta put yourself out there, you know, and, and 
you know, it doesn't hurt to ask, you know, and at least the very least you're going to walk away with more knowledge, you know, and we're going to, we're going to help you as best we can and give you some of that additional knowledge and some of that additional uh, support mechanism where you can go back and say, hey, okay, maybe I'm not ready today, but maybe I'm ready in six months. You know, I'm like, let's do that. Let's get something prepared and let's, let's bring you back. Right. Yeah. So that's that, so that's great, Mark. Yeah. Well, unfortunately we are out of time, but thank you again. Bye everybody. See you next thank time. Thank you. All right. Take care. Thanks for joining us today. Please don't forget to subscribe, review, and share this show. If you'd like exclusive content and behind the scenes insight for just $4 a month, you can support us at buymeacoffee.com. Now go make it a great day. Oh,